Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back today to share with you an alternative way that you can create with the latest sheet load of cards, January 2021. Today I will be telling you how to use less cardstock and less matting. I hope you'll stick around and find out how. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I debuted the latest sheet load of cards, January 2021, I acknowledge that the amount of cardstock you needed and the cutting guidelines were a little bit more than usual. Because of the way that I created this month's sketch, you were required to have five pieces of colored cardstock and the cutting guides to cut those out was a little bit more involved than usual. I know that not all of you like to have those thick layered cards, so I let you know that I will be back later in the month to show you how you can adjust the cardstock and the layout just a little bit to have less cardstock needed and less matting. And today, that is what I'm here for. I'll go over the changes in the supplies needed, tell you a little bit about the products I'll be using, and then we'll get started on that process. If I leave you with any questions, make sure as always to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. If after watching the video today, you want to download January 2021 and you haven't already, that video will be linked in the description box below. For today's cards, you will still need the three 12 by 12 pattern papers and you will still need five pieces of cardstock to cut and fold into the card bases. Now, just like originally, you will end up with one extra card base since this month only yields nine cards. For the cardstock, originally you needed five of a color and then one white or off-white for your sentiments. We will actually be skipping all of CS1 and you will need two pieces of white or off-white cardstock, whatever you're going to put your sentiment on for your CS2. I realized as I was editing today's video that I still had the printout from before when I fixed the quantities of CS1 and CS2. So I might be saying the wrong cardstock today, but just pay attention that we don't really need any colored cardstock. We'll just need some white cardstock for the sentiment strip. Please excuse this error and I will try to do better next time. I'm using Valentine's themed paper today for my cards, but I don't really need nine cards that say something like, be my Valentine or I love you. So I thought I would pull out my Gina K Designs fancy greeting stamp set, and I'll be using the So Glad We're Friends and You Make Me Happy sentiments. I thought that was appropriate for the occasion and then these could be used past Valentine's Day. I'm not sure if this set was something I got as an incentive for an order I placed or if it's a regular set in their online store. If I can find it, I will link it in that description box below. Once again, just to show you the card socks, I have five for my card bases and then two for my CS2 sentiment strip. My original plan for this video was to go back to my local scrapbook store, which is Busy Scrappin' here in Omaha, and get the same three pieces of pattern paper I used for the original set. That way we could compare side by side what a matted version looks like and a non-matted version. But unfortunately, when I went back to get those, they only had two of the three pattern papers that I used. So, plan B. I ended up getting the three Valentine's themed papers. These are all from Echo Park Paper Company's Cupid and Company line. And this time I did get two sets. So at the end of this video, I will share with you the second set that I created off camera that follows those original instructions and has all of the matting. 
When I chose my pattern papers for today, I wanted one pattern that was kind of busier and had multiple colors. And then I tried to pick out two more patterns from the line that were a little less busy that focused really on just one of the colors in the pattern paper. So I have kind of this pink and dark pink plaid here and then the red background with the white hearts. I thought that these would all go together nicely to create cards. I did forget to mention one thing that might change what type of cardstock you get out. If you want your little fishtail banner piece here to be a solid colored cardstock, you will want to go ahead and get out maybe half a sheet of cardstock so you can cut and punch those pieces. I will actually be using some of the leftover pattern paper in place of that solid colored cardstock piece. Let's get crafty! For the cards today, I did go ahead and start by cutting my three pieces of pattern paper per the instructions on the cutting guide. But since I've already shown you how to do that in the process video, I won't make you watch that again. Now if you haven't seen that process video, it will be linked in the description box below. Once all of the pattern papers were cut, I'm now going to use some of the scraps from that to cut the piece that will end up being my fishtail banner. Now the instructions call for these pieces to be two and three quarters by three quarters, but because I'll be using a punch on mine, I will be cutting these pieces to three inches wide instead of two and three quarters inches, and then I will cut them into pieces that are three quarters of an inch tall. Just because it's handier with my little Fiskars photo trimmer, I did get that out for these pieces. Once all of those were cut down, I brought in my Stampin' Up! Pick a Banners punch, and I will be using the fishtail end. I purposely made these pieces three quarters of an inch tall because I knew that was one of the dimensions that would fit into the punch. All you do is slide that in, punch it, and you have a perfect little fishtail. I do this for each of these until I have nine finished banners. Now that all of the pieces are ready, I'm going to make my card kits. I just start by taking the trucks, then the plaid, and then finally the hearts. Now for my fishtail banner, I'm going to go with the pattern paper that's in the background. So for this first one, I go back to the trucks. I do this same process again, but this time, instead of taking my second paper from the plaid, I'm going to grab the hearts, then go to the plaid, and then once again for my little fishtail banner, I will pick the trucks. I go ahead and continue the same process until I have the nine card kits put together. Once those were all done, I brought back in my trimmer and my two pieces of white cardstock. I will trim this down to stamp my sentiment on it. Since there is not a cardstock in the background to mat these with, I'm going to cut this piece to two inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Now, originally I said you would need two pieces of white cardstock for this, but you'll see here in just a little bit once I cut these sheets in half to four and a quarter inches and then start cutting them down to two inches wide, I realize that I'm going to get more pieces out of each piece of cardstock. I actually end up getting 10 out of one eight and a half by 11. So the second piece of cardstock is not necessary. Now I should have probably done this already, but I did bring in my stamp set to make sure that both of the sediments I wanted to use would fit on a two inch wide strip. This would be a place where if your sediment didn't fit on that width, you could always adjust this piece to whatever you needed. The next thing I did was start to put the cards together as much as I could. I placed the largest piece of pattern paper on the card base and this one just like in the sketch will get a line to the left. And then once that was in place, which I did have to adjust it just a little bit here to get it centered nicely, I took the middle size piece of pattern paper or piece B, put adhesive on the back of that and then that got aligned to the right centered. Then I brought in my cardstock strips that my sentiment will be stamped on and I placed pattern paper C at the bottom of that. Now before I can add this to the card, I do need to put my flag on there and do the stamping. 
Originally, the flag was going to cover up kind of part of pattern paper piece C, but when I placed my stamps up to that piece, I realized that that would leave a lot of white space at the top. So instead of overlapping that piece there, I just aligned it right with the top of pattern paper C. I will stamp on these later, but this way I'll know exactly what I need to center that in for my stamps. I continued this same process until I had all nine of the card fronts ready for just that stamped piece. For the stamping, I brought in my Misty and my Gina K Red Hot ink. I thought this matched the red on the heart paper nicely. Once again, I'll be using that Gina K Design stamp set, and what I'm going to do is get my first stamp set up. I'm going to start with the stamp that says You Make Me Happy, and I will place that in that top white area until it's centered left to right and top to bottom as best as my eyes can tell. You'll see there I did have to get in the camera a little bit to get a better look at it. Once that was in place, I picked it up with the door of my Misty, inked it up, and stamped it. Now this stamp is new and has not been used, so I did have to stamp this first one a couple times. One of the great things about the Misty is I can set this stamp up once and then just continue to stamp it in the same exact place for more cards. I ended up stamping You Make Me Happy onto six of the pieces and then for the final three I brought in my rag to clean off my stamp and then I switched it out for the sentiment that says so glad we're friends and I stamped the final three with this sentiment. And now I can go ahead and finish these cards. On my original set and on the second set that you'll see today, I did use some foam tape to pop these up off the card because there were lots of layers underneath this. But because I didn't do all the matting, I could just add adhesive to the back of this and place it right onto the card. This will make it very handy for mailing. It won't be bulky or have you know lots of bumps. So that is one of the great things about not matting. I finished all of those up, and here's a look at the finished cards. So now that you've got to see this set without any matting, let me go ahead and show you the second mat I made where I did add some pink cardstock mats. So for this second set, I used some light pink cardstock for my mats. Because of all of the layers of the paper and the cardstock, I did go ahead and just pop the sentiment strip up with some foam tape on there. And for my fishtail banner piece, I did go ahead and emboss that just to give that some extra texture. I decided to use the thank you so much sentiment because I need some more cards to send to subscribers and I thought these would be a cute set to do that and that I could tell them thank you for the letters and cards they send in. So here's a little side-by-side -side comparison for you where the pattern papers go in the same order on each piece and then you can see the difference between matting the pieces and not. Now let me know below what you think, um, but I do think that the one on the right is a little bit more appealing to my eyes. I think it's worth the extra bit of cutting and the extra bit of cardstock. If you enjoyed seeing an alternative way to use a January 2021 sheet load of cards, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.